continuing our discussion in the gross anatomy of the lower limb in our next chapter we are going to discuss about uh, the lateral medial anterior aspect of the leg and also we discuss about the dorsum of the foot as we studied in our earlier chapters we discuss about the superficial fascia deep fascia the muscles cutaneous uh, arteries deep arteries and its muscular branches so here also we begin this session by studying the superficial fascia as we stated in other compartments that the superficial fascia of this region also contains the cutaneous nerves lymphatic cutane the superficial veins arteries and all the structures which are present in this region we are going to study so let's begin our discussion today in the superficial fascia with the superficial veins in this region so the superficial veins we are going to study is the superficial veins of the front lateral medial as well as the dorsum of the foot okay yeah first of all if you see in this is the dorsum of the foot in the dorsum of the foot the venous arch you are seeing here is called as the dorsal venous arch here you are seeing the venous arch this venous arch is called as the dorsal venous arch if you want to tell about the anatomical location of the dorsal venous arch this arch is located at the proximal parts of the metatarsals at the proximal aspect of the metatarsal bones the formation of the dorsal venous arch takes place okay so let's study here if you see this is the dorsal venous arch here this is the dorsal venous arch this dorsal venous arch has a medial end this is the medial side and this is the lateral side so let us assume that this is the medial end this is the medial end and this is the lateral end okay so before we discuss about uh, the formation of the short and great saphenous veins let us see the tributaries of the dorsal venous arch which means how the dorsal venous arch is formed so here over the metatarsal bones the dorsal venous arch receives four dorsal metatarsal veins it receives four one two three and four four dorsal metatarsal veins drains into the dorsal venous arch here you can see 1 2 3 4 there are totally four dorsal metatarsal veins drains into the dorsal venous arch okay so here each dorsal metatarsal vein this is each dorsal metatarsal vein receives its uh, its tributary is from dorsal digital veins so like that every dorsal metatarsal vein this is the dorsal dorsal metatarsal vein each dorsal metatarsal vein receives two dorsal digital veins like this like two dorsal digital veins okay so these are the dorsal digital vein so the dorsal digital vein drains into dorsal metatarsal vein and the dorsal metatarsal vein drains into the dorsal venous arch and the dorsal venous arch has two ends one is the medial end and another another one is the lateral end here you can see this is the medial end and this is the lateral end okay and at the medial and lateral ends the dorsal venous arch receives two veins on either side on medial end it receives medial marginal vein this is the medial marginal vein and on the lateral end it receives the lateral marginal vein here you can see this is the lateral marginal vein it receives a tributary from the medial marginal vein and from the lateral marginal vein 
So if you see the drainage of the medial marginal vein, the medial marginal vein drains from the medial aspects of the great toe. This is the medial aspect of the great toe. From the medial aspect of the great toe, the vein which forms is called as the medial marginal vein joins with the dorsal venous arch at its medial end. So after it joins, it forms, after it joins, it forms great cephalus vein in front of the medial mellulus. So here you have a medial mellulus. So joining of these two veins forms great cephalus vein in front of the medial mellulus. Okay, that is very important point to be noted. So here in front of, in front of medial mellulus, in front of medial mellulus, it forms great cephalus vein. Okay. So after the formation of the great cephalus vein at the medial margin of the medial mellulus or, or at the anterior aspect of the medial mellulus. Okay. So what happens? It runs upwards along the medial border of the tibia. Here you can see this is the medial border of the tibia. It runs upwards along the medial border of the tibia. Okay. So here it runs along the medial border of the tibia okay to reach the medial margin of the knee this is the medial margin of the knee where it runs backwards that is posterior aspect of the knee okay where it runs backwards it is posterior aspect of the knee if you see the great cephalus vein along the medial margin of the tibia it is related anteriorly to the saphenous nerve. It is related anteriorly to the saphenous nerve. As you know that saphenous nerve is the posterior division of the femoral nerve. Okay. So anteriorly it is related to the saphenous nerve. Okay. Now let us discuss about the lateral side. So lateral end of the dorsal venous arch also receives a tributary called as lateral marginal vein. Lateral marginal vein drains from the lateral aspect. Lateral aspect of the little finger here. Here you can see this is the lateral aspect of the little toe. This is the lateral aspect of the little toe. From the lateral aspect of the little toe, it drains to join the lateral end of the dorsal venous arch to form to form short saphenous vein, short saphenous vein, where behind the lateral mellulus, okay, this is anterior to the medial mellulus, the formation of the great saphenous vein is seen, and the formation of the short saphenous vein is seen behind the lateral mellulus, okay, so after it forms behind the lateral mellulus, it runs behind the leg or it runs along the posterior aspect of the leg where it accompanies with the sural nerve. Understood? After the formation of the short saphenous vein behind the lateral mellulus, it runs along the posterior aspect of the leg where it is related to the sural nerve. Okay. And here along the medial margin of the tibia, the great saphenous vein is related anteriorly to the saphenous nerve which is the posterior division of the femoral nerve. I think you understood about the formation of the dorsal venous arch and also I think you understood about the how the short saphenous vein as well as great saphenous vein runs along and finally once they reach along its course these are called as the superficial veins because we are studying uh, the veins uh, which are present in the superficial fascia. So these are the superficial veins communicate with the deep veins. For example, here I will draw this is the deep veins. Let us think these are the deep veins. The superficial veins communicate the, with the deep veins through the venae cavities are called as perforating veins. 
so here i can say these are called as the perforating veins so perforating veins communicate with the superficial veins of the leg to the deep veins okay so by this we finished what are the veins which are present in the superficial fascia of the anterior lateral medial as well as the dorsum of the foot now let us discuss about the cutaneous nerves which are present in this region right so let us uh, start our discussion with the cutaneous nerves which are present in this region so we will see the cutaneous nerves here cutaneous nerves which are present in this region so let's have a rough diagram here okay so this is the lower part of the thigh assume that and this is the patella and this is the leg here right so this is the leg and uh, think that this is the great toe this is the small toe okay now we will see what is the cutaneous distribution or cutaneous nerves of the leg so first i will divide the leg into different compartments so it is uh, then it will be very easy for us to see what are the nerves which are innervated in this region here first i will divide the leg into the medial as well as lateral okay and then i am dividing into different regions here okay so let us see what are the nerves which are innervated in these areas okay first let us discuss about the infrapatellar nerve infra patella nerve infra patella nerve is nothing but a branch of saphenous nerve infra patella nerve is a branch of saphenous nerve it it runs from the posterior aspect of the knee it runs from the posterior aspect of the knee by piercing sartorius by piercing sartorius and deep fascia to reach the anterior margin of the knee it is a branch of saphenous nerve and after it arises from the saphenous nerve at the posterior aspect of the knee it pierces the sartorius and the deep fascia and runs along the anterior aspect of the knee where it supplies here where it supplies the skin where it supplies the skin over ligamentum patellae so skin over skin over ligamentum patellae so that is the cutaneous innervation of the infra patella nerve next this region is inner uh, is supplied by the the nerve this nerve is called as the saphenous nerve saphenous nerve the saphenous nerve as i already mentioned you that it is the posterior division of the femoral nerve okay and uh, this saphenous nerve supplies the skin over the entire medial margin of the leg you can see entire medial margin of the leg and the medial margin of the foot and also it supplies the medial margin of the great toe so what is the innervation the cutaneous innervation of the saphenous nerve point 1 medial aspect of the leg cutaneous innervation of the medial aspect of the leg so this is entirely called as the medial aspect of the leg so it gives cutaneous innervation to the medial aspect of the leg and second point it gives innervation to the medial aspect of the dorsum of the foot or you can say medial aspect of the foot medial aspect or medial border of the foot and it also gives innervation to the medial margin of the great toe 
medial margin of the great toe so this is the cutaneous distribution of the saphenous nerve here which is a branch of posterior division of femoral nerve and next this if you see this area the lateral aspect of the leg according to the cutaneous distribution has been divided into the upper two third upper two third and lower one third so upper two third here upper two third of the lateral aspect of the leg is innervated by lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf is nothing but a branch of common peroneal nerve it is a branch of common peroneal nerve okay and um, it innervates the skin over the lateral aspect of the skin over the lateral aspect of the upper two third of the leg you can see here skin over the lateral aspect of the upper two third of the leg so this is the cutaneous distribution which is given by the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf which is a branch of common peroneal nerve right next the lower one third is innervated by the superficial peroneal nerve so the lower one third is innervated by superficial peroneal you know that the superficial as well as deep peroneal nerves are formed immediately after the common peroneal nerve winds around the neck of the fibula here the superficial peroneal nerve innervates the lower one third of the the lateral compartment of the lower one third of the leg and also it gives cutaneous innervation to the entire dorsum of the foot cutaneous innervation to the entire dorsum of the foot except some areas what are those except areas for example except the medial border of the foot as well as the medial border of the great toe because it is innervated by the saphenous nerve and if you see a cleft between first and second toe here you can see a small cleft area a cleft between the first and second toe because it is innervated by the deep peroneal it is innervated by the deep peroneal so which cannot be innervated by the superficial peroneal so again i will repeat superficial peroneal nerve is a branch of common peroneal nerve and it innervates the skin of the lateral aspect of the lower one third of the leg and entire dorsum of the foot except the medial border of the foot as well as the medial margin of the great toe and a cleft area between the first and second toe because it is innervated by the deep peroneal and the medial border sorry the lateral border of the foot here this is the lateral border so the lateral border of the foot as well as the lateral margin of the little toe because the lateral border of the foot as well as the lateral margin of the uh, little toe is innervated by the sural nerve is innervated by the sural nerve okay so these are the three areas except these three areas the entire skin over the lateral aspect of the lower one third of the leg and entire dorsum of the foot is innervated by the superficial peroneal nerve so by this we studied about all the cutaneous nerves which are innervating in the anterior medial lateral and also at the dorsum of the foot